Well, I wrote the whole uh, season in quarantine. So I think, like many of us, I was grappling with some larger existential questions about what life I wanted to be leading, um, if the life I was currently leading was as fulfilling as I wanted it to be. I think in quarantine, so many of those questions came into sort of hyper focus for so many people. And there was also like an interesting nostalgia that I think was a part of that time of looking back at paths we didn't take in or (laughs) uh, we hadn't taken or or people we hadn't chosen. And um, so I wanted to write something that sort of explored the what ifs that can tend to haunt us in life. And, um, and also that feeling of like, obviously escapism and fantasy, but through the lens of like the muck of life <laughs> um, and what and what that looks like in relationship and when it comes to sexuality. And so, yeah, that was the, the, the general origin of, of the story. Yeah, you know, the multiverse is obviously a big part of the zeitgeist right now. Um, it was something that excited me in terms of um, putting sex and sexuality into into that framework because I hadn't really seen it before. And I think especially like, as I mentioned in quarantine, the sense of isolation and sort of entrapment, (laughs) if you were in a relationship, um, the multiverse was like such a a great way out um, fantastically to like think about what other lives could look like and and, um, for better or for worse, but to play with that, that sphere. No, it was always a TV show. I hadn't really played in the TV space. I had made mostly um, features, and so it was really an exciting space for me to experiment with, and I think especially the nature of this show because there's so much world jumping. um, Yeah, episodic felt like a natural fit. Yeah, I mean, I think I wanted to push the bounds, um, and I think because... I was both behind the camera and also my body was on the line, so to speak. It it felt that I could do so. um, And the only person I would be, (laughs) you know, putting at risk was myself. But I wanted to do that. I think female sexuality in particular is such a rich space to explore that has not been explored through a female lens uh, specifically, but in a way that, um, yeah, could subvert the male gaze and still be really sex positive and sexy and sensual. And, um, and so I wanted to see what, um, putting like a woman's pleasure at the center of every episode would look like, um, and what a sexual awakening for a woman would look like in the context of the multiverse. I had dabbled, you know, (laughs) um, But I think I was really interested in um, the archetype of the hungry ghost specifically within Buddhist theology. And I don't I don't identify as a love addict, but I think addiction when it comes to love and relationships and intimacy is something that really interests me. Um, And that hungry ghost served as a really um, helpful (laughs) like through line in terms of exploring that feeling of like, I can't be whole without another person or without a sexual encounter. And so much of the um, sort of outward facing searching that we do when in fact we should be searching inwards. So I think Buddhism was um, a helpful tool thematically to explore those things. My production designer, Danielle Sahoda, um, had her whole team do all of these different hungry ghost interpretations. Um, So it was amazing to see um, what they did with them. And, and, uh, and we've kept some of them. (laughs) I have a poster still because they're really beautiful. What I liked about exploring the multiverse was the ways in which there was consistency throughout them so that these objects or talismans could be traversing each world but have potentially different meanings within them um i think the monotony of everyday life but especially in quarantine like the objects that became (laughs) the sort of totems of our habits like 
a mug or whatever those things were I wanted to incorporate to sort of I guess drive home just like what habituating those kinds of objects in a life can mean to a person and then how they can be imbued with with new meaning potentially um and I did that with with characters too like I really liked bringing characters from from world to world in different roles and and seeing how people showed up differently and how they served the story differently Roku has been a, a dream partner, <laughs> truly. Uh, I wrote all the episodes, uh, which is not the norm. Um, so I, I handed all seven episodes written to Colin Davis at Roku, and um, he gave me a green light to go shoot it. And that is like <laughs> unheard of and, and such a dream as a creator to be given that kind of artistic freedom. Um, and that has continued throughout the process. So I just feel deeply grateful um, for that experience. And um, and there was, yeah, like no compromises that I was forced to make around the sexuality of the show, which is also pretty amazing and, and revolutionary. And I'm really excited to be a part of, yeah, this new era in Roku's original content. My composer, Joseph Shabison, um and Christine Bougie, that they're brilliant. And um, I think I liked the idea of having a sort of like retro sound to the score. Um, something that I, I think tonally, like my sweet spot as an artist is something that can navigate comedy and also, um, you know, deep dramatic moments. And so score is such a big part of of navigating that tone and they just did a brilliant job. Um, and yeah, finding the irreverence, I think in also the, the conceit of the show was a big part of a score that could mirror that. I mean, I'm excited for people to have fun, <laughs> like have an escapist journey that is also makes them feel hopefully seen and understood in their own existential sort of queries and soul searching <laughs> that they can feel like they're not alone in in asking those questions and maybe wanting more from life. Mm -hmm.